Oh, yeah, and you know, Ray, if you want to start anything over again, yeah, go yeah. for it. Okay, groovy. Don't say <laughs> for all that other Please, <laughs> <laughs> unless you want to pay for all those. I'm so thrilled to be sitting oh, down with man, you. Oh, man, you kidding me? It's my thrill. I mean, this is the first great late-night show in Austin, Texas. That's the kindest thing I yeah. couldn't even imagine. Thank you for saying that. It's a big time for you. Next year, Asleep at the Wheel will be celebrating your 50th anniversary. Hard to believe, but yeah, that's a fact. This is a fact. It's not a fake news, it's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible is what it is. When you started this band, what was your intention back then? To play music, to have fun, and maybe last 10 years, you know. That would have been, you know, my idea of success, but that's why it's, it is kind of exceptional. Your idea of success was a decade. Here you are almost five decades later. It's a lot of luck, a lot of hard work, and a lot of wonderful people. Uh, Sleep at the Wheel has been this collective of over 100 musicians, 50 or 60 road people, management, et cetera. It really has been an incredible experience with so many people. Where did Sleep at the Wheel begin? Paw Paw, West Virginia. I know, she's going, are you kidding me? <laughs> Seriously, in 1969, I was in, in college, my two pals, one was in Boston in college and then another was in Maryland in college. And uh, so we're going to form a band, it was Lucky and Leroy. We had some friends that were caretaking a farm in West Virginia and said we could come help with the farm work and start a band. So we did. So how'd you get to Texas? Well, first I went to California. Okay. We formed a band and we met Commander Cody and his Lost Planet Airmen and they had us come out to California. Got a record deal. Van Morrison came down to a club one night and, and liked us and put us on some shows and then mentioned us at Rolling Stone, which back then meant everything. All of a sudden we had a record deal. And we were playing in Dallas and met Willie Nelson who heard about us. And and then we played in Austin in 73, February of 1973 at the Armadillo World Headquarters. And it was like, well, why wouldn't we move to Austin, Texas? It was the greatest uh, place in the world and still is. You know? I'm glad to hear you say that, and still is. A lot has changed in those 50 years. What's still the same about the band and you? Uh, I'm the only thing that stayed the same. <laughs> Um, that's about it. But the town, of course, have changed and the music, it was 45 RPM records and, and albums and then these things called cassettes came out. I mean, so that's how far back I go. We've been through 8-tracks, CDs, and now streaming, etc. Yeah. It's a whole other ball of wax. You mentioned Willie Nelson. Y'all are good pals. What has that friendship meant to you over the years? I wouldn't be here or anywhere, I don't reckon, without Willie. You know, we met way back when we were still playing little clubs and creating this Austin scene, you know. And he's just been the best friend, you know. He's, he, uh, he put us on shows when times were bad. Disco hit and this wasn't so great for us sleep at the wheel. He let us go to his recording studio for four years. We made kept recording and in fact he did duets with me wow. <laughs> and uh, finally got back on track in the mid 80s. He came from the same place we came from 20 years earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Austin City Limits taping, you were the first episode. Yeah, Willie did the pilot in 74 and in 75 we did the first one. They asked us who we wanted on the show with us and we said the Texas Playboys and that was Bob Wills band. I think we've done th I've 13 or so now. That is so incredible. The first episode. Well, my roommate, Joe Gracie, uh, was a DJ at KOKE FM, the original one, and he was hired to book the show. We lived on South 6th Street down in the Bolton Street neighborhood, which was the cheap neighborhood, mm -hmm. along with Jimmy Vaughn, Stevie Vaughn, everybody. We were all broke, but if you lived in South Austin, you weren't broke mm -hmm. because it was so cheap, you know. And, so, uh, it's a block of legends over there. Yeah, I mean, the first year I was Jimmy Buffett, I remember, because he was just a, a songwriter and uh, I can't remember, you know, all the guys around town. It was very local, you know, and that's what was so great about it. Because that was 75, and then Stevie and, and those Jimmy didn't come along until the late 70s, early 80s, mm -hmm. and that was a whole other uh, incredible explosion of great music. And it continues to happen every 10 years, and what we all tried to do was make this a great place for musicians to live, Boston, Texas. And you sure did. Yeah, it's a little expensive now, but uh, they're still coming and so we just try to help. What might you tell your younger self then that you know now? Is there a message you would give to that kid in the 70s? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, 
I think the only thing I would tell myself is um, is to uh, be a little more patient. Uh, mm -hmm. But if I'd been more patient, then maybe not have gotten where I went. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it all have been, works out the way it's supposed to, doesn't it? And gonna bring me down. Yeah, she's Do you remember what it felt like when you won your first Grammy? <laughs> well, it's a funny story. Uh, we were in Lubbock, Texas, because uh, we didn't think we were going to win. It was not a good night. We were playing a place called the Eight Second Ride, which is about bull riding, mm -hmm. you know. So it was a country dance hall. The guy couldn't pay us the meager amount we were getting. And the guy comes on the bus and said, hey, they're emptying out the pool tables to pay us in quarters and dollars and <laughs> everything. And this guy comes up to the bus, hey, hey, I just saw on the news that y'all want a Grammy in LA. <laughs> I went, yes, I just, I was not impressed. I said, really? I don't believe it. And then I said, sure enough, all of a sudden somebody, well, we didn't have mobile phones, so oh, yeah. nobody could call. And uh, yeah, they sent it to us in the mail. <laughs> don't go anywhere. After the break, we're back with more Ray Benson.